an example of when you use the mean sampling distribution confidence intervals equations and when you use the proportion confidence interval equations. All right, um, and I'm trying to go slow because I'm trying not to mess up and I know you're also copying at the same time, but feel free to pause the video or the pencast, write what you need to write, and then play it so that you can listen and watch me as I'm writing, okay? All right, we're going to do an example for mean sampling distribution, calculating a confidence interval for your mean sampling distribution. Let's say that there is a temperature measuring procedure, boiling temperature, let's say, and it has a standard deviation of 1.2. Alright, so what they just did is they just told you that sigma is 1.2. Standard deviation is regular sigma. Let's say that a student measures sample size 6, 6 samples of a liquid and she measures all of them and she takes a temperature, right? A student measures a sample size of 6 temperatures. for a liquid. And she gets an average temperature, an average boiling temperature of 101.82. So her average temp is 101.82 degrees. What they have just given you is mu. Remember, mu is the same for the population and for the sampling distribution, so this is our mu. The question would be, what is the confidence interval? So they want CI for the population mean at a 95% confidence level. And I'm just going to write CL for confidence level. Alright, so now we're working with these notes. Now you can see where I'm making this star symbol right here. We're working with this because it's about averages. If it was about proportions, we would be working with the other side, but it's about an average temperature. So we have to calculate a conference interval using the equations on this side. The first thing we need is the standard error. So we need to calculate sigma sub x bar. Now look up in the notes, and sigma sub x bar is regular standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Regular standard deviation is, and I'm going to circle it, watch where I'm circling, right here, we know sigma is 1.2, I'm writing 1.2, and I'm going to divide by the sample size, what's my sample size? My sample size, and I'm underlining right now, box it in, my sample size is 6, so over the square root of 6. And you type that into your calculator, and you should get 0 0.49, okay? The next thing you need to calculate is um, Z star. Z star, if you look at the equations and we're looking above, is the confidence level in decimal form divided by 2 plus 0.5 and I'm reading right here okay you can see the little arrow that I just wrote Z star is the confidence level divided by 2 plus 0.5 confidence level that we're interested in and I'm gonna I'm going working at the bottom part of the page now is this if you can see where I'm circling, I'm going to put an arrow right there so you can see. My confidence level is 95%, so I'm going to write 0 0.95 divided by 2 plus 0.5. And when you type that into your calculator, you get 0 0.975. And now you're ready to calculate the confidence interval. The confidence interval... Right, the confidence interval is 101.82 plus or minus 
0.98 times 0.49. Z star is 0.98. Sigma sub X bar is 0.49. And you clean that up. And you get that. Alright, we are going to continue this calculation. I've crossed out 0.975 and I wrote 0 0.98. And the confidence interval is going to be, once again, more up here. Looking at the equations, if, you, uh, if you're watching the video, you probably can't see this right now, but look at the confidence interval for a mean sampling distribution. It's going to be mu plus or minus z star times the standard error, which is sigma sub x bar. Isn't it fun, all of these different variables? All right, mu is 101.82 plus or minus Z star, we just calculated Z star to be 0.98, um, times sigma sub X bar, which we calculated to be 0.49, so we multiply those two. 0.98 times 0.49 gives you 0.48. And this is the confidence interval, this is the range, if you want to think about it, at 95% confidence level. And that is what you report as the answer. All right. Just make sure that you go through the example a second time, click back, and listen to it again. Um, it got cut off a little bit because I kind of pressed the pen at some point, and I think it stopped recording. So, But I think I got everything kind of going back. Now I'm going to show you how to do a confidence interval when you have a proportion. And this is pretty much how a proportion question goes. It says, the proportion of left-handed... Oops, there's a dash somewhere in there, of left-handed baseball players. Yay, go baseball! Uh, we'll say pro baseball players. Um, we have 59 players that we're going to sample. And if, how many did I say? 15 of them are left-handed. All right, we want to calculate a 90%, hmm, I want to run out of room, so I'm just going to write it here. Calculate a 90% confidence interval, CI, for short. The first thing that you're going to need is you have to calculate the proportion. And I'm drawing an arrow so that you can see where I'm at. My P hat is my part that I'm interested in over N. I'm interested in 15 players being left-handed out of 59. 59 is N. So 15 divided by 59 is when you round 0 0.25. And I'm going to find out on this how many of these decimals we should be keeping. I'm keeping two for now. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so 0 0.25 after I rounded that number. The next thing I need to calculate is sigma, the standard error, sub p hat. And sigma sub p hat, you should be looking at your equations to make sure that we're filling them in correctly. To calculate sigma sub p hat, we got to put a big square root. On the top, it's p hat. p hat is 0.25. And we multiply that by 1 minus p hat, so 1 minus 0.25, oh, over... The sample size n, and n we said was 59 because we have a total of 59 players. When you type that into your calculator and you round, I got 0 0.06. And now we have to calculate z star, and z star is the confidence level in decimal form divided by 2 plus 0.5. The confidence level that we're interested in is 90%, right, right here. And so we write 0 0.9 divided by 2 plus 0.5. And I got 0.95 after I rounded. And now I'm ready to build my confidence interval. My confidence interval CI is my P hat. And I'm working with this equation right now. So if you're watching the pencast, you kind of have the benefit of seeing all of this. If you're watching the video, I have zoomed in. So um, I'm going to try to move up in the video. Hopefully we'll catch it. But um, P hat is 0.25. I just previously calculated this. A plus minus sign. 
z star z star is 0.95 times sigma sub p hat 0.06 and you see all the three numbers that I just calculated the three numbers that I just used so I calculate one by one and then I put plug them into my confidence interval so my confidence interval is 0.25 plus or minus and 0.95 the margin of error 0.95 times 0.06 basically uh, with rounding the numbers being so small 95 percent being almost one stays at 0.06 but it's because of rounding it's not because you know I didn't multiply it or something and that's the confidence and well of course you have to say the confidence level so this would be at a 90 percent confidence level because the interval would be different if you were more positive or more confident or less confident. So it'll get narrower or wider. All right, so make sure that you write these notes down. You have the equations. You have an example of each. And um, if you have any questions on how to do this, I highly recommend that you watch how I solve these two problems twice. When we come to class, we'll address anything that you don't understand and then I'm going to separate you into the into the groups and have you work on the problems using your notes. So you need to make sure that you understand your notes as much as possible. Thank you.